morning. Thank you for joining us at the RTA. Uh, my name's Beck, and I'm here with my colleague Leah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're both from the Web Services Project team, and we're to here to talk to you a little bit about what's going on with the Web Services Project at the RTA, and most importantly, to talk to you about some of the enhancements that we've introduced to the Web Services this week. Uh, so, Leah, do you want to talk us through a little bit of the history of the Web Services Project? Yeah, absolutely. So, back in June of 2019, the RTA launched our bond lodgement web service, enabling anyone looking to lodge and pay a single bond, whether they were a tenant, property owner or manager, to do so digitally on any device, anywhere, anytime. In recent months, we've been focusing on a new suite of web services to really streamline the essential customer transactions around ending a tenancy. These are for bond refunds, bond disputes and updating your details. With more than one third of Queensland households renting and the average length of tenancies sitting at 17 and a half months, it's vital that RTA customers find it easy to do business with the RTA, particularly when beginning and ending tenancies. Yeah, that's absolutely right, because those can be really quite stressful times for everyone. So we want to make sure it's as easy as possible. So let's talk about this. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of today's sessions. Uh, so yesterday, the RTA introduced a series of enhancements to the web services, and these particularly focused on improving our online bond lodgements. Now, these upgrades have all been made in response to customer feedback, and they will make processing these transactions online even faster and easier. So a few things that these enhancements are going to do. They're going to make it faster for property managers and agents to lodge a single bond online. They're going to enable customers to increase their bond online quickly and easily via the bond lodgement web service. So we've now introduced a dedicated bond increase option to that service. And they're going to improve matching and validation of property addresses. And this is going to help customers uh, to ensure that their details are correct and in a consistent format. And that's just going to save time for everyone and minimize manual rework. Okay, so we're also going to give you a little bit of an update today on what's happening with, um, with the RTA in general. And of course, we're gonna answer any questions you might have. Uh, now, please note that we do tend to receive a lot of questions and we're gonna to endeavor to answer as many of them as possible. If your question um, isn't answered at the end of this and it's urgent, please call our contact center and they will be able to help you. And just to note that we do have a question session at the end. So if you're asking questions during the presentation and we're not answering, we're not ignoring you. We just here have that session at the end. So I'd like to find out a little bit more about who's with us today. So we're just gonna launch a poll. Um, and can you just tell us which group in the rental sector you belong to? All right, you'll see that poll. It's a blue box on your screen. Just gonna give you a bit of time. So what have we got there, Leah? So we've got majority of our listeners today are property manager agents. Uh, we've got a few landlords, community support organisations, some tenants and residents as well. Brilliant. Okay, so we're just going to close that poll. So a little bit more information about the web services journey so far. So we've processed um, over 50,000 bond lodgements and more than 12,000 bond refunds through our web services already, which seeing as um, they haven't been live for long is a huge amount, would you say, Leah? Absolutely, it is. Um, so already web services account for 40% of bond lodgements and over 60% of bond refunds, which is really great. Um, so 90% of customers who fed back to us about the bond refund rated their experience as positive. 75% of customers who rated their experience of lodging a bond through the web services rated it as positive. So it's a little bit lower. Um, and if you're wondering where that feedback came from, at the end of our web services, when we introduced the latest round, so that was the refund, update your details, service dispute, uh, bond dispute service, uh, we put a little enhancement on the end of the form where customers could provide feedback using that thumbs up, thumbs down button. You'll see it on the right hand bottom side of your screen. Um, and underneath that, there's actually a free text box. So if you are using the web services and you see something that you're like, oh, that would be really helpful if they could just improve that, um, you can um, 
put that free text into the box and click submit. We really appreciate that feedback. We do read every piece of it. Um, so please do help us to make our web services even better by doing that. Okay, now we're going to um, launch a poll. Just to find out um, how many of you have used the web services before. Um, so you might be a new user, you might have used them, you might be using them every day, or you might be about you might be about to use them for the first time. So just tell us what what it is for you. That poll's now up on your screen. It's the blue box again. So we're getting some really fantastic results here. We're seeing at least 75% of our listeners are already using our web services, which is really fantastic. Well, excellent. Well, while most of you are already using the web services, just a little note for the few of you who are um, about how to access the RTA web services. Um, so we've taken you through that process on the screen. So you'll start off at the RTA website where you'll be able to say what you want to do through web services. So for example, you might want to lodge a bond, refund a bond, update your details. So you click on start now and that takes you to the RTA's terms and conditions. Have a read through those and um, if you're happy with those, agree to them and proceed. And then you'll be taken to the QGov page. Um, now the QGov um, registration page basically is a digital identity verification service. Um, from the Queensland Government. It is your substitute to a signature on a paper form. So what you need to verify your identity there is 100 points of ID and a unique email address. Um, please note that it does need to be a unique, not a shared email address. QGov will not accept it if, it's, um, if that email address has already been taken by another customer. So property managers, just a little note for you that you'll need to log in with for want of a better word, your personal work email address. So for example, that would be like Rebecca at ljhooker.com. Um, but once you have logged in and verified your identity through QGov, we will send all of the um, correspondence to the main email address that your organization has registered with the RTA. So if you're wondering which email address is that, just ask around in your organization and say, where is the RTA sending all our emails, our acknowledgements of rental bonds, et cetera. You'll soon figure out that's the address you need. Um, and you can find out more about QGov or web service requirements on our website. And if there's any problems with it, you can give our contact center a ring. So the web service enhancements, let's talk about what is new. So this is the RTA ID film. Leo, would you say it's the most exciting thing? This is really going to improve our customers' uh, use of the form and make time much faster for them lodging their lodge, uh, bond lodgements. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're introducing these enhancements in response to feedback from our customers and staff, like I said earlier. So basically what we've heard from property managers and agents who were lodging multiple bonds through the RTA web service was that it was really frustrating and time consuming that they had to put in their organization's details every single time they wanted to lodge a bond online. So we've listened to that and now as you'll see on the screen it's gone from this on the left hand side to this. So all you need now to log in is your organization's RTA ID and you just need to provide that main email address that we have on record for your organization. So like I said, if you don't know what it is, find out what the main email is that we're sending all the correspondence to. That will be the, that will be the one. And a little note, we're gonna talk more about this, but our joint lessons will, all, will also need an RTA ID. All right. Um, so where do you find your RTA ID? Well, um, firstly, let's talk about who needs one. So if you're an agent applying for a, um, using the web services on behalf of an organization, you need an RTA ID. Joint lessors and tenant organizations also need an RTA ID. Single property owners and tenants and residents, you don't need an RTA ID. And one thing, we're gonna talk about bond increases in a second. So if you're doing a bond increase, just remember, you're going to need your bond number. That's the sort of the one piece of information that's different between a bond lodgement and a bond increase. Um, where can you find that RTA ID? Some of you might be wondering. Well, good news, we did a mass email out to everyone who needs one yesterday. Um, it was titled Important Knowing Your RTA ID and to Access Web Services. So check your inbox for that. 
Uh, we did another email blast in uh, November, so you should have also received it then. So do a search in your organization's main inbox for RTA ID and you should hopefully find it pretty quickly. Um, what, what do you do if you're a new organization, Leah? So if you're a new organization and you haven't interacted with the RTA via the web services yet, you can actually go online and select update your details to create a new RTA ID. Once we create that new RTA ID for you, we will send you an email providing you with that ID. Brilliant. So another thing that we've in, we've improved is we've just made our, our address matching criteria a bit smarter. So Leah, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So we've really improved the functionality of this uh, address matching. Uh, it's now a much more intuitive form, and this is to help assist our customers entering their property addresses into the web services in the right format. So this will really help avoid delays caused when our staff have to contact customers to confirm and manually fix the addresses. We have prompters along the way and new fields for you to confirm trickier addresses for units and rooming tenancies. You'll also see a little helpful hint at the top there, uh, just an example of how to enter in a unit number to assist with this um, address matching. Brilliant. So another thing that we've introduced is this new easy, easier to find and edit functionality. Leah, why did we introduce that? Yeah, so this is really great. Previously, customers could uh, edit their fields that they'd entered, but they had to use the navigation bar on the left, and it wasn't very obvious to our customers. So we've introduced these edit buttons on the right-hand side that will take you directly back to the field that you want to edit. Once you've edited the field, you can just click on summary to take you right back to the end. That's brilliant. And once you've done that, it's really important that you check over your summary um, thoroughly before submitting. Uh, like Leah said, very easy to edit. So once, you, once you're happy with it, you'll scroll down to the bottom of the summary page, click submit, and then you'll end up on this little page that you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the page. Um, and there it says, uh, you'll see we've circled the print my summary button. So if you click on that, you'll be able to print the summary page. You can, it'll come up as a PDF, so you can save it as a PDF or you can print it really recommend you do that so that you can keep that on record. Uh, so increasing your bond using web services. This is the other thing that's really exciting, isn't it, Leah? Yeah, it really is. So a little few key points. So a tenant or an agent can uh, submit a bond increase. Uh, you need a Q government registration, just like you do to access any of our web services. Like we've discussed, if you're an agent, managing party, joint lesser, or a tenant organisation, you'll need to know your RTA ID. Most of you will probably already been using it for bond refunds anyway, um, but like I said, I've given you some hints on where you can find it. Um, you um, will need to have your bond number at the ready, and just remember that it's only suitable for existing contributors, so obviously you can't increase the bond if you haven't lodged a bond in the first place. Um, one thing you'll need to do is confirm all tenants' email addresses now, Leah, correct me if I'm wrong, that's only if we don't already have an email address. Yeah, so if the contributor on the bond doesn't have a registered email with the RTA, you will need to provide one. Um, and does that go the same for property managers and agents? No, this is just for the tenants only. Okay. Um, and then you also need the ability to make a payment via VPay or credit card. Just remember too that you have to make this as one full payment. So say if you're a tenant on there and you're uh, lodging a bond increase or, or a bond lodgement for that matter, um, and you're, you've got some housemates, make sure you all sit down, organise who's paying the bond, transfer the money and then do it in a single payment. So just about the importance of communication and making sure that you're all on the same page with that. Um, so Leah's now going to talk us through um, what it looks like with a bit of a video. Uh, Leah's just going to talk us through it now. Thanks, Beck. So my colleague Beck has already talked you through what you'll need to log into QGov. If you want more information about QGov, check out our website. For this demonstration though, we're going to assume that you've already created a QGov account and logged in. So once you've logged into the RTA web services through QGov, you'll then arrive on the Bond Lodgement web service at the For You Begin page, where you'll be asked to provide information about the property and your role in the tenancy. You'll need to confirm your details and provide a contact number for either yourself or the contact person for the lodgement. 
There's also an option here to provide us with your preferred name if this is different from your legal name. You'll then be asked what kind of bond lodgement you wish to complete. For this demonstration, we'll choose the bond increase option. So now you'll enter the bond number for your tenancy. If you're a joint lessor or you're lodging a bond on behalf of an organisation, you'll also need to enter your RTA ID. You'll then be asked to confirm your tenancy details. Once you've done that, you'll be asked to confirm if the bond contributors are still correct. If they are, you can proceed with the increase online. If the contributors have changed, you won't be able to continue online and you'll need to download a paper change of bond contributors form, which you can post to the RTA. So next you'll be asked to enter the new weekly rent amount and the new bond amount. You'll see those helpful hints popping up as well. You will then need to confirm the tenant contribution amounts. You can choose to either split the bond increase equally or delegate different amounts to each tenant. You will then be asked if the end date of your tenancy has changed. If it has, enter the new end date. So at this stage, you'll be asked to provide emails for any contributors who don't have an email registered with the RTA. Remember, all parties must provide a unique email address. You can't use the same email address as another bond contributor. At this stage, you'll be asked to, sorry, after all contact details are complete, you'll be taken to the summary page, which shows you all the information you've entered. Read over this carefully to check that all details are correct. And once you've confirmed the details, click Submit. On the next page, you'll be given a reference number, which you should note down. You can also use this page to print a summary of your bond increase and provide feedback on your web services experience. You will then proceed to the QGov payment page where you can pay your bond increase quickly and easily online either by debit, credit card or VPay. Okay, so now we're just going to talk a little bit about tenancy legislation. Um, so it's really important that you know your rights and responsibilities. So the one of the main things. So you make sure that you've discussed, um, make sure that you've discussed the agreements of your tenancy. Make sure you've discussed the rights and responsibilities with your tenant. So a few things to note. So if you're increasing the rent, you can only increase the rent um, six months into a tenancy, and after that, you have to wait an additional six months. Um, before you can do a second rent increase. Uh, when it comes uh, rent increase, um, there's a, but every tenancy type is different and there's a lot of different information on our website about all the different types of legislation around the different tenancy types. It's really important you read that before you increase a bond or um, a bond or you do a rental increase with your tenants. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of an RTA web services update now. Our services have changed dramatically over the past 12 months, so this is just to give you a little bit of an update about what's happening there. Uh, so, as I've mentioned, you can lodge a bond or increase a bond online. Um, unfortunately, you can't lodge a bond with a DHPW loan uh, via the web services, but the good news is you can use the web services for a refund there. Uh, bulk bond lodgements are currently not available um, on web services, but that is something that we're investigating. Now, I think the bond refund part of the web services is the most um, exciting bit. Wouldn't you say so, Leah? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, making transactions really fast to do these refunds, and we're seeing people receive their bonds quite quickly. Excellent. And the other thing is that you can do an agreed bond refund or a disagreed bond refund. You can do the whole thing through web services. So you can start with like the fast track, then go to notice of claims, and then go to disputing the bond amount. 
So all of that can be done by our web services. And the key thing to note is that web services are always the fastest option. So a little update about what's happening with the RTA ID, with, with the RTA. So the RTA is working on additional web services. So we're anticipating to have to be launching those in the months ahead. Um, and these are to provide dedicated online channels um, for a range of different services. Um, so the existing upload facility for scanned paper refunds was decommissioned on the 1st of February, 2020. The good thing about that is that we are now seeing um, a huge increase in the number of customers using our web services um, and people are using those web services really quickly. Like I mentioned, we've got that 90% positive feedback on the um, bond refund web service. So people are really getting it, which is really great to see. Um, another thing that's happening, which is a big win for customers, is a possible expansion of QGov digital identity requirements. So we've heard from customers that not, um, not everyone's been able to create a Q government account because of their identity documents. So QGov's been listening, we've been listening, and we're looking at potentially, QGov is looking at potentially expanding the list of digital identity documents that you can use to verify your identity. So that's something coming in 2020. Um, and just a little note about the RTA webinars, they are all available online. So once this webinar is finished, um, if you know somebody who you think might want to listen to it that hasn't been able to make it online today, um, just wait a couple of hours and it should be on our website. And there's also webinars on all, a lot of our other web services. So if you want to find out more about refunds, lodgements, et cetera, you can go on there. And just a little note, the next webinar we're going to be doing is on the 25th of February, and it's all about water charging. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about that shortly. So our RTA is on the road. So the RTA is on the road. We're going to do information sessions for property managers and owners that will be held over 16 locations between February and June. These sessions are 90 minutes each, um, and they're going to be presented in a range of locations. Excitingly, we're doing our first roadshow this afternoon, um, and next week we're going to be going to Toowoomba and Roma. Uh, over the months ahead, we're going to be going to Moreton Bay, the Sunshine Coast, Logan and Gold Coast, Ipswich, Redlands, Townsville, Cairns, Mackay, Rockhampton, and more. Um, so if you want to find out more about those sessions in your area, register for our newsroom. Um, you'll find that on the RTA website, and then you'll get all the latest and greatest news about where we're going with our regional roadshow. We'd really love to see you there in person, so please do come along. New podcast alert. So this is very exciting. So uh, this week we've launched Talking Tenancies. It's our, it's our new podcast. Um, I've had a listen and it's sounding great. Leo, have you had a chance yet? I haven't had a chance yet. It's definitely on the to-do list, to -do list, but podcasts are a really quick and easy way to get information absolutely so the first um episode that we did this week was for first time renters and a little sneaky peek for you that next week we're going to be doing a uh podcast on where does your bond money go so tune in for that if you're wondering where you can get talking tenancies it's on spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app now we've got some questions Yep. So we've had people asking us about whether you can pay your bond in instalments using the bond increase option. Um, the answer to that is that, um, yes, you can. The bond increase option does allow you to do that. Um, where possible, always, if you can, great to lodge the bond in one payment. Um, but if, if, if that's not possible, you can be using that for, you can be using the bond increase service for bond instalments. So bulk uploads, we know that this is something that our customers have been asking us about. Um, yeah, we can see quite a few questions in there. Um, so that is something that we're currently investigating and we really are hoping they're gonna have an update for you quite soon. As soon as we know more, we, we will let you know. Um, however, some of the advantages right now is that because of the um, RTA ID field that we've uh, put into the lodgement service, it's now a lot faster. You don't have to put in your organization's details every time. Um, you just have to enter that RTA ID and that email address. So that should hopefully really speed things up for you. Another thing to note is that with the web services, it's now a lot easier to get your tenants to be proactive and, and launch their own lodgement. So that's another, another thing that you can look at encouraging them to do. 
So we've had a few questions around uh, organisations updating their agency bank account details and who can do this. So anyone authorised on behalf of the organisation can do this, but they must have access to the registered email address that we have with the RTA, the existing registered email address. This is because there's a two-step authentication process when updating the organisation's details and you'll receive a verification number that you must enter into our system within 10 minutes. It does expire after 10 minutes. Once you receive this and enter it, you can then go forth and update any details for the organisation. So we've had a few questions about uh, Form 2Cs, so bond loan, bond lodgements with the Department of Housing and Public Works. So at this stage, we cannot do these through the web services platform. These will need to be uh, posted into us or emailed just as they are now. Okay, and we've also had quite a few general questions about refunds and how the uh, refund web service works. So um, you can go onto our website and we have a huge list of FAQs on there in our bond refund web service that you can answer. You can also watch a video online. Um, which will give you more information. And we did do a webinar as well about bond refunds. So it might be good to go back and um, have a look at that. So we've had a few questions here about what if the tenant doesn't have an email address back? Yeah, so the important thing to remember is firstly, if the tenant doesn't have an email address because it, it may be because they just haven't provided you with one. So firstly, give them a ring and just make sure that it is the case that they definitely don't have a unique email address. If they don't, this is one of the big reasons we've kept those paper forms. So you can still, and you will always be able to print off those forms, fill them in um, and post them to us. So we have made sure we've got options for those tenants who don't have email addresses. But like I said, really important that as a first step, you check with them because you might just find they haven't provided you with one. And just a reminder to, um, to check your emails for the RTA ID. If you find that you can't find that RTA ID in your email address, do give us a call. But like I said, we sent an email, uh, email to every, we should have sent an email to everyone who needs one yesterday. There was another one sent out in November. Um, and like Leah said, if you're a new organization, you can update your details and get an RTA through that, but that's only for new organizations. So we've had some questions as well about how do I know or who do I know who the contributors are on the bond. So if you are currently registered through e-services as an agent, you still have access to log in through e-services to view those details. This will then help you going forth and doing the uh, bond increase and online. All right, so I think that, that is, that's all the questions that we've got time for for now. Like I said, if we, if we weren't able to get to your question and you feel like it's urgent, please do give our contact centre a ring. Thank you so much for tuning in today, everyone. There's just one final slide before we, before we go. So for further information on the RTA's web services, remember that you can visit our website and you can call us on the number on the screen. Um, if this is a, and if you and a quick survey is going to pop up on your screen once we close this webinar, we'd really appreciate you completing it before you close the window. So this is about our next webinar. The topic is water charges. We really want you guys to help inform um, how we're doing our webinar. So we're going to put up three different case studies, and we'd really like you to choose the one that's most relevant for you. If you can do it, that if you could do that for us, that will really help us, and that will inform um, how we take our next webinar forward. Again, thank you for your attendance. We appreciate your time. Thanks everyone for joining us today. The webinar will now close.